Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today we're gonna to meet Dwayne, and Dwayne is in this gorgeous, gorgeous uh, step van that you have turned into an amazing little home. So Dwayne, how long have you been in your van? I've been living full time for just over a year. A year now? And so uh, you're still a young man, you can't be retired. Yeah, I'm way <laughs> retired. <laughs> way retired. <laughs> no, I retired uh, end of last summer and uh, got rid of everything that I couldn't fit in here. And so you, uh, you're you just living on your retirement income? I am. Based, I live purely off my uh, Social Security except for uh, my emergency fund. And why did you decide to become a, uh, to live in a van and just wander around? That seems kind of odd. The, the first uh, reason, which probably isn't first anymore, was just uh, to be able to afford uh, retirement without being totally strapped. Right. So the quality of your life for the amount of money coming in is about the highest this way as it can be. Absolutely. And so it's just been miserable ever since, and you just have regretted every second of it? Just a few, but... Uh, a few, <laughs> no, no it, doubt. It's been getting better and better. Uh, so we uh, awesome met up with there. Brian's caravan last, uh, early last winter. Uh, everything just kind of seemed to fall into place and uh, got the hang of the whole thing and didn't, uh, didn't miss uh, the house at all. Good. Yeah, that's what I hear. A lot of people, they don't know what to expect. And then as they move into it and get comfortable with it. And so moving, finding the caravan was a real turning point? It was. I think uh, probably would have ended up in the same uh, sort of uh, situation without it. But it just made everything more comfortable, more faster, uh, you know, more secure. And I think that's also a really common uh turn of events that people find that once they have a community then things just feel right it, was that kind of true for you that made uh, a huge difference and uh, made a ton of friends there it's uh, seems a lot easier to make friends out here than it was in a city of three million people <laughs> yeah yeah surrounded by people and not really bonded with hardly anyone right that, that was the story I hear from most people. And yet you come out here and I don't really know why, but it just, you meet someone and all, all of a sudden you just feel really connected. And uh, it turned out you kind of uh, found someone you felt very connected to. Right, uh, Ditsy with uh, ProMaster Van. Uh, we've been together most of the time since uh, last December. Mm -hmm. And uh, we travel together in two vehicles and uh, works out excellent. We have the same interests as far as uh, what we want to see, what we like to do. Uh, she encourages me so that I'm walking more and being more physically active and uh, that's good for both of us. Very good. So you found a kind of a soulmate. Yes. And, uh, out, just out here. She's a little goofy, but Sometimes that's really good. Yeah, she, she keeps you laughing. Yes, uh, she's kind of an, she's really amazing. I would love to show to do a video with her, but she's a little bit. Uh, yeah, she. Uh, that's okay. But she said uh, you're welcome to ask about her. And oh, this is her van, right? Let's, the, uh, uh, Brad, if you'll just move over there. This is her ProMaster, the moving on, <laughs> the Cow Van Nation. And so you didn't, she didn't move in, you kept both rigs. That's a little more expensive. It is, but uh, we're both uh, in somewhat comfortable uh, financial positions. We're both doing social security and uh, we don't pay for any camping except uh, we did buy the New Mexico uh, Parks Pass and that, that was a good value. But. Uh, it's easy to live cheap. Right, I found that as in dating relationships out here that the two, you're so independent that sometimes you need to move separately. Yeah. And if you keep two vans, you can find that great balance of connecting as a couple and independence when you need it. Right, and 
If you need your own space, you can't do it in one one vehicle very one, well. One little tiny. In fact, I couldn't even do it in a two thousand square foot house. Yeah, yeah. I I I, I think nearly everyone out there understands that idea. That uh, even a two thousand square foot house can be too small sometimes. Right. But this works really well. It really does. You would recommend this. Uh, if it, it's hard, the right to, it's hard to recommend, yeah. but I would I would caution people against uh, getting rid of that second vehicle until they're absolutely sure. Right. Well, why don't we take a quick look at your rig? Tell sure. us a little bit about it. It's a 2001 workhorse. Uh, I don't know who made the body. The body's all aluminum. Uh, the roof is fiberglass. Uh, it's a uh, just a 5.3 Chevy gas V8 Great power engine. in it and uh, three-speed automatic with uh, overdrive and uh, a little slow going up the, the mountains but not a lick of problem with it yet. Yeah that's a that's become a real legendary engine it'll run a long time. Yeah it's only got uh, about 95,000 on it now so. Oh that's just just barely broken in. That's right. Really really that's that's got a lot of miles left. Well why don't we take a look inside. Dwayne, why don't you go ahead and uh, show us around. All right. The front is uh, just real basic. Uh, it's noisy, it's dirty, and uh, it's a beast to drive, but it it handles well. And uh, But about 200 miles a day is, uh, is all I like to drive because uh, it's very tiring and uh, very noisy. But... Uh, that's why we have a wall here. Right. <laughs> and uh, the 5.3 actually gets pretty decent gas mileage, but with this much weight, it probably drops. Right. I'm uh, fully loaded. I'm about 12,500 pounds, and uh, my overall average is right around nine miles to a gallon. Which isn't bad for a no. big rig. And I, in the last year, I've put less than 10,000 miles on it, so I'm not a big mileage person right which is which is good okay why don't we go on inside i love the door i mean it just feels like home <laughs> doesn't feel like uh, an rv that's a real house door this is a real house door from home depot uh um, metal exterior door got half glass in the door because it lets in a lot of light uh, it's just the the wood just gives it such a warm home friendly feeling yep i've got wood floors the the paneling is this real lightweight tongue and groove cedar it's just uh three eighths inch thick pretty economical and all the walls are done in that cedar there's no finish on it i don't know if there ever will be if it stays clean but, uh, four windows two these are just little house windows i've got two that uh open with screens and two fixed windows in the bedroom in the back just for light oh well this is uh the kind of an out of the ordinary thing you've got a wood stove right it's a cubic mini out of canada it's the smallest one they make it works pretty well if you're willing to uh, cut wood into really little pieces and uh but i've got the time to do that we've been using it couple weeks ago camped around the Grand Canyon it was getting down into the 20s every night and usually build a build a fire in it in the evening and then if it gets cold enough uh, during the night or the early morning uh, just light it and close it back up very nice yeah no there's uh, nothing better really than uh than wood heat out here, I think. It is. Uh, if, when you're in the National Forest, the wood supply is unlimited and free. Under the sink uh, is where the wood box is, but the wood has to be cut into pieces about this size or smaller, so that can be kind of tedious. Yep. So you got a whole bucket in there. That'll last yep. you a long time. That's, uh, yeah, if you could burn it day and night for probably a week with what's in there. Mm hmm. Oh wow, that's, that does burn fast then. And nice sink and yep. uh, just more storage up here. My Kind of my idea when putting this together was to make it as much like a house as I could. I thought that would be 
most comfortable for me and uh, I think I succeeded pretty well. The only things uh, I had in the last house that I don't have here is washer and dryer and a flush toilet. Mm -hmm. So I do have a full size shower, which... Uh, and I'm you have a, a great big fresh tank. Yeah, I have a 53 gallon fresh water tank. I've got a, a Girard on demand hot water heater. And the shower is actually just plumbed into the hot water. There's no mix valve because uh, I've got a digital uh, thermostat for the hot water heater and I can set the, the water temperature pretty precisely. This is the thermostat for the water heater set set the thermostat for 110 and as soon as it uh, as soon as it uh, warms up it's at 110 it takes about 20 seconds for the water running to uh, to run hot but one and a half gallon uh, shower head so I can take a pretty luxurious shower with about six gallons of water drain water goes into a 28 gallon uh, gray water tank, a regular RV type one I put right under the shower in the sink. The cabinets are, are all Ikea, mm -hmm. cheap stuff. I l love the sliding drawers. Oh man, that's just because really... It just really makes access to everything. Uh, that's a clean, easy slide. Real easy. And I like being able to put stuff away. I may not be real clean, but I hate clutter and uh, this makes it easy. The My clothes drawers are on sliders too. And that's also Ikea. Very, very nice. And the fridge, where's the fridge? The fridge is back by the bed where Oh, there it is, yeah, <laughs> right, of course. <laughs> The fridge is a unique brand and it comes out of Canada too. It's not marketed uh, to RVers. It's actually, make sure nothing falls out. It's actually marketed as they just uh, off grid uh, fridge. It's 12 volt? Yes. Oh, wow. Like 12 or 24. Uh, no options for propane or full voltage. Right. And it's probably not as efficient or well insulated as some of the more expensive ones but uh haven't had any trouble with it except for uh latches and stuff breaking because it wasn't designed for an rv but those have all been taken care of mm -hmm. this is a closet had to cut it so it would clear the cabinets here right but it's a solid wood exterior door so it wasn't hard to cut to fit the opening and then the closet here is just storage Pantry, uh, toilet, and the hot water heater is on the bottom of the... Nice organization. Yeah. There's, uh, <laughs> there's the hot water heater. Yep. And here's the toilet. Yeah. Right. Standard five-gallon bucket. Homer. <laughs> right. But I I do have uh, this fancy uh, seat and lid. Yeah. That's a real upgrade. Yeah. That, that makes it uh, very comfortable. Just like home. Just great organization here. Just really fantastic. Well, we did a lot of a lot of planning both before and during the, the build, and I'm pretty happy with the way everything uh, spaced out here and is accessible. And so here's your bedroom. Nice, right. perfect. Bed's uh, only 34 inches wide, but it's uh, seven feet long. And you're a tall guy. I'm not, you're... I'm not seven feet, but there's plenty of room back there. I'm about 6'5". Six, 6'5", five. So six, five, you had to have a pretty big rig. And here's your iPad as TV and right. entertainment. And, right. And the wood's just gorgeous everywhere. My oldest son helped uh, with the build, and he's actually a better carpenter than me. It probably wouldn't have finished nearly as nicely without him. It looks great. It does. It just looks great. The, we don't have any fixed seating except for the bed and then uh, just a simple fold-up table that is usually only up for, for meals. 
Mm-hmm. A lot of counter space. I oh, like to cook. A lot of counter space. Uh, got more, more counter space than most 40-foot uh, Class A's, I think. Yeah. <laughs> the things that are important are fantastic in here. Yeah. Everything you need and not, not much more. Right. Just, I don't have an oven. I've got a two burner uh, match light uh, RV stove. The stove and the hot water heater are uh, copper plumbed with uh, flare fittings uh, back to the tanks in the, in the garage space in the back. It's fantastic. And you, even though you're 6'5", you still got plenty of headroom. Yep. Just lots of headroom there. And I, and every year I get a little bit more. <laughs> and eventually, yeah, you're going to do, <laughs> do jumping jacks in here. <laughs> the, I've got these uh, ceiling lights, uh, these little two-inch LEDs, I think eight of them on a dimmer switch. Uh -huh. They throw a lot of light. Yeah. Even I, on a uh, sunny day like today, you can see the big difference there. Right. Make. I've got a... Max Air fan in the front and a fantastic fan over the bed. And if you have a choice, I would highly recommend the Max Air over the fantastic fan. Oh, really? I just, it's quieter. Uh, it's got better adjustments on speed. And uh, the lid is better also. It's got a better hinge system with a lock on the, on the little turny thing. And you have a uh, garage in back. You cut some of your length off to have a garage. Right. The, the box is 15 feet from the front wall to the back wall of the garage. So the living space is only, uh, well, I shouldn't say only because most of these people are in a lot smaller vans. But uh, right. it's only 13 by 7, the, the living area. So about 90 square feet. And you have a Harley. Yes. And it rides right back here on this uh, electric hydraulic lift gate. It's a regular Tommy gate that they use on like UPS trucks, delivery trucks. Uh, I had it cut down to about uh, a little over three feet because with the ramps, they're usually about two feet longer than that. Some other welding alterations done on it got rid of the folding mechanism so it just goes up and down 1600 pound capacity and the Harley only weighs eight 60 amp uh, charge controller uh, 2000 watt inverter and the three 200 amp hour uh, gel batteries from Renogy nice nice setup um, yeah, that's a lot of solar there. How much solar do you have on the roof? 600. Uh, I've got six 100 watt uh, tiltable panels. This side I've got uh, the two 20 pound uh, propane plumbed in to the inside. And then I carry one extra tank up here somewhere. Really nice. Pass through door oh, look at to, that. The, to the front. Don't use it much, but. No, uh, but it's there. And uh, So you could just reach through and if right. there's, you know, you knew something was in storage right there. And if there were a, a fire in the front, I can actually crawl through there. Right. <laughs> that is, having that second exit is uh, really, really wise. I've loved, always loved people who put in the garages. They're just really nice. And this came with a roll-up uh, garage door, and uh, I couldn't figure out how to leave that in there and make it no. work. So we took the whole thing out, and now we have uh, a cedar exterior uh, wall with the, the doors. Well, Dwayne, it's just fantastic what you've done here. It's really, really beautiful and nice. Thank you so much for sharing your home with us. It's, it's amazing. Thank you. So there you have it, folks. A really great uh, tour of Dwayne's amazing uh, step van conversion. I know that's given you some great ideas. I know you're also out there drooling just like I was every step of the way. Sorry about the mess we made. Uh, I hope you'll forgive me. 
And so uh, thanks for watching, folks. I'm so glad you did. If you got anything out of it, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later.